In a fast story, resident of Sampa Valley, it's within the Wager Dam buffer zone. They vowed not to relocate despite perennial threats posed by the dam. In an attempt to save the dam from collapse, the Ghana Water Company, which manages the facility almost every year, opens the spill gates, flooding communities downstream in the process. Despite several warnings, the residents are adamant, insisting that government must find an alternative solution to their problems. Well, Join News Daniel Dadzi has been to the communities and reports there's been another spillage. Except this time, the residents say they did not receive the usual notification or warnings and thus are unhappy about the current situation. It's a familiar script here in Sampa Valley. The rains come down, water levels go up, the floodgates open, hundreds are affected. Interestingly enough, Residents of this community and about 10 others that are in the dam buffer zone are used to the annual ritual. They say they have nowhere else to go, and so they must cope with it. Where do we go? Look at the city, it's choked. That's why we come here. Even look at this area. It's choked. When we came here, I think we are the second house here. But now, go and see. The whole place is full. So what do we do? The government is not ready to provide us accommodation. We must force to get our own accommodation. So what do we do? We have to live by it. If God bless, we see how best we can handle it. A bad year, but a ma a few months are and I'm in two. I am a bad one in two. Like the flooding is not as serious as other areas in Accra. The water doesn't even enter our rooms. It just floods the roads and our compounds. So, okay, so move here. We didn't get into like one month. We do know. The flooding only occurs in a few months during the year. During the dry season, there's no problem at all. But you be in the and you are to do for him. You see, a some even leave the community during the rainy months and return when the flooding is over. During the rainy season, I go to my hometown. I have never been here when the gates are open. But even afterwards when I return, there is still water in the compounds. This year, however, the script seems to have changed as the flooding has begun with no announcements from the Ghana Water Company Limited. The residents are complaining that this is not how things are done here. This very one, I, I, I don't hear. This very one. But I normally hear the announcement. I've never heard an announcement like that before. When they open it, the flood waters rise gradually. We only wake up to see our roads and compounds covered with water. By the time they make the announcement, the area has already flooded. Maybe week year away and maybe be a moyen sa a backgrounds and a mama announcement and say ye be you mean one may be that when they make the announcements, they don't tell us if we will be affected. Next thing we know, our homes have been submerged. Reporting for Joy News, this is Daniel Dazi in Wager. <laughs> And Daniel will be going back to the place um, later part of the day and be looking at how far the residents are still faring after the spillage. But let's go to the prisons where incarcerated medical doctor Ali Gabas, who is serving the sentence for defiling a minor way back in 2014, says though he didn't commit the crime, he's happy to be doing time. Dr. Gabas was convicted for sodomizing a 16-year-old boy and as a result, sentenced to 25 years imprisonment in a high-profile case unearthed by Joint News investigative journalist Manasseh Azore Awene. Breaking his silence since his incarceration some three years ago at the Insawan Medium Security Prison, the medical doctor, who is also a Muslim, says he's thankful to God for putting him in prison. He spoke with Joint News Latif Idris.
who started by asking him to compare Ramadan behind bars to usually what pertains outside the walls of a prison. What I do more is I actually engage myself in teaching, helping those who want to learn, uh, you know, especially with the sciences and all that. I do that, and that's all that I do. So, so let's come to religion. Uh, today is 29. Some, some people have 30 today. Some have 29. Some have 28. I'm talking about Ramadan fasting. How different is fasting in prison and fasting in the outside world? Okay, you know, fasting has been prescribed for all Muslims, and we all begin and end it on the same note, you understand? The only difference is that outside, you are free to choose whatever you want, you know, how you want to fast. But here, because of the restriction, even the, the prayers that we do, we actually combine the prayers, and you know, it's not that of the best, but we do our best, and we do uh, what we can, you know, because we pray the Tarawih, the Maghrib, the Isha together, and that puts some kind of restriction. And when it comes to uh, the Laylatul Qadr type of, you know, devotion, and because we are all tahajjud prayers, we are locked up. And there are no spaces for you to do. All you can do is just to do your zikri wherever you find yourself, in your own kana. But otherwise, we fast just like anybody outside there. And we pray our normal prayers, and that's how it is. Back at home, I used to organize small party for my neighbors, both the Christians and the distant. So we all enjoy. All these are memories that you cherish, mm. which you cannot do here. You can't compare to celebrating it with your nuclear family, extended family, where you visit each other and all that. So those nostalgic feelings definitely will overwhelm you at a point uh, during the celebration. Yes. Mm. In other stories, the World Trade Organization has cautioned that government would have to begin to engage some of its trading partners on their tariff and quota regimes immediately if the One District, One Factory Industrialization Initiative is to fully succeed. Government is positive that the initiative could transform the Ghanaian economy and also fast track its development. Though the WTO is excited about the prospects of the One District, One Factory Initiative, its Director of Information and External Relations, Keith Rockwell, told journalists ahead of the workshop in Accra that without the necessary engagement, the items produced by the local factories to be set up would be unable to penetrate the international market. WTO is, is a trade organization. If you think of it really as a contract between governments, it's a commercial contract in which every government makes pledges to the others and says, if you want to do business in our country as a foreign provider of goods and services, these are the terms under which you do that. And the same thing applies to, to Ghanaian entrepreneurs when they try to do business in other parts of the world. And it creates a certain predictability, a sense of certainty, uh, and transparency that's absolutely essential. Before, before companies begin to invest in production and in looking for new markets, they need to know the rules, the rules of the road. If they don't, then it's too much of a risk. So that's what the WTO can do. Um, in terms of how the government chooses to go about establishing uh, more industry here, uh, one of the things that we can do is to help bring down the barriers to these products I mentioned before that are more value added. Because right now, Ghana can export raw timber, raw cocoa, raw unrefined petroleum without any duty. But it's the value-added component. It's refining, it's making these products, it's, it's processing them. That's where you create more jobs. If you take timber and make furniture out of it, you have more people at work. And it's more interesting work, it's more, it's more value-added, it requires skills. Uh, but the problem is, is that the furniture is taxed in other countries at a higher rate than would be the raw timber. And the same goes for, uh, for Ghana's exports of, of other raw materials, including cocoa. If you make a chocolate bar out of cocoa beans, you're going to have more jobs, you're going to add more value. Uh, it's higher skilled work, it's more interesting, 
Uh, and that's the kind of thing that, that in terms of a development-oriented program, really makes a lot of sense. Now let me tell you this, it's become an annual occurrence on Selector Street in Accra. Young men and women riding on roaring motorbikes. Jennifer Ikwema took a stroll down to the John Ejekum Kufan Avenue, or what is popularly known as Cup Rice, to find out why this daredevil display has become a cherished tradition in the Muslim community. Is it all Fizzer? Early in the morning there was prayers and then there was feasting and now there is this. Up and down the J. Kufour Avenue, young men have been parading on motorbikes. Let me speak to a couple of them and find out exactly what is going on. Oh, we are just celebrating the Allah Festival. As you, see, as you can see, there are so many people. We are just having fun. Yeah, because we don't want any trouble. So we are just having fun. It's peace riding and, you know, as you can see, we have our helmets, as you can see, we have our uh, riding jackets. There are so many things going on over here, so no problem. Yeah, so we are just appealing to the police that they should just size patients for us. We're going to close very soon. It's Salah, so we have to have fun. It's once in a year, and they're not going to see this anymore. So they should just allow us to do our own thing. Okay, but let me ask you, you know, I think a couple of years ago, there was one and then the, the guy crashed into some of the crowd. Aren't you scared something like that will happen again? Oh, okay. What I can say is it depends on the speed that you are using, you see. So whenever you are riding, you have to focus. If you don't focus, somebody can easily cross, somebody can easily cross you and it's going to cause so many things. So riding this, this year around, we are, you know, we are taking our time to do everything. We just don't want to cause any accident. As you can see, there is no accident. Yeah, so everything is gradual process and inshallah, from next year, we, you're going to see different things, different car price, you know. Different car price. Yeah, we are going to organize a big show because we heard there are some guys in Cote d'Ivoire, they are also champions. So we want them to come to GH and we do it. This time around, we are going to Dependent Square and it's going to be Ghana versus Cote d'Ivoire. The winner takes all, so no problem. Okay. Tell me, how, how does it feel like to do these rides every year? You see, I just do this one for my people. But, but I beg, the thing you are doing, have you told the police you are, you are going to do these peace rides? No, sir. No, Why? no, no. Just unexpected. Just come unexpected and I just came here. But aren't you afraid that they might arrest you or something? Oh, no. I know all the police, they know me, so that's why I just do it. I know they know about me, so when they come, they will see me and they know me. So I write for them, I write for everyone. Yeah. But now it started raining. Are you going to continue? Of course. We're going to do some boom, 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 boom. Ah! Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Well, Barakad Salah, I say, I grew up in Ashaim and I know that it's always a sight to behold to see them on the streets of uh, the traffic uh, getting towards close to Ajekujo. It's always an exciting uh, period. Well, I wish them well. And uh, now let's move on to another exciting thing on education. It used to be live on TV, but now has gained a lot more prominence also on social media. That's what it is. We're talking about um, the National Math and Science Quiz and uh, Premper College at the Sabel College and St. Thomas Aquinas School will be the finalists at this year's National Science and Math Quiz. Having urged our schools such as Infantapim, <laughs> Ghana National College, and the Legon Presbyterian Boys School to make it this far, the final is expected to be a very keen contest. The National Science and Math Quiz has grown in popularity in recent years mm -hmm. thanks to the massive following it has gained a lot more on social media. John News Maxwell Agbagba was at the RS Amagashi Auditorium at the University of Ghana where some notable personalities showed up to provide support for their armor martyrs as the fate of the finalists in this year's competition was decided. The excitement of the National Science and Math Quiz hit on the red dots as the Desano College has booked the place at the finals of the ongoing competition. In fact, it was a close shave for them as the beats the University of Toronto Senior High School by just one point. Now, it feels like associated with them, I'm in my black and white. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I think in there, there was so much energy. Uh -huh. uh, I would like to say, well, we had to take the boys through a certain catharsis, you know. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all that is needed is we came good. We are in the final. Our prayer is that once we are in the final, we are as reigning champions, we are taking the trophy back to the hill. I have some old students here with us. I mean, famous amongst them is counsel, lawyer, 
Edward Febo Jr. What an impressive contest. I mean, as an old student of Ghana National College, I'm here with you know some of the old students, some of my mates and schoolmates and the rest. I think that our team did very well. Um, in the end, Addis Adel appreciated the fact that we put them in the final. It, 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 for us, we'll come back stronger next year. Well, outside the RS Amegashi Auditorium, where the National Science and Mass Quiz is taking place, the auditorium itself is bursting at its seam. But these presents and past students gathered here cannot control their emotions. Some of them are really calling for spiritual intervention, even as they head into the final round of the competition. It's a display of emotions and strong allegiance for the alma mater. And Santipin School has 49 points. Cranfair College has 55 points. Cranfair College. Congratulations on winning the contest. Well done. Well, the contest between Prempec College Infant Supreme in School and Maoli School just ended. At the end of the day, um, these students from Prempec College are the ones jubilated. They've made it to the finals of the competition at the National Theatre, and they cannot keep calm. <laughs> Oh, the final, we're taking this one for sure. In three years, we're taking two. I mean, last two years, we took it from Addis Adel. And we are meeting them again this year. Re history repeats itself. We're beating them. Just here, the quiz mistress has been doing a wonderful job of, you know, uh, moderating this competition. Dr. Elsie Kaufman, I want to find out from her her expectations ahead of the final competition on Thursday. Dr. Kaufman, what has it been like being the quiz mistress for this competition? Oh, I'm honored to get to meet all these bright young people. It's amazing. I'm enjoying myself. I love what I do. Expectations ahead of the final competition come on Thursday. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. Don't miss it. And if you've been friends to some of the contestants back in school, you know that they prepare a lot to make sure that they become contestants or uh, make sure they have a good showing, whichever school that they com they com they're coming from. We have to say congratulations to the finalists this time around and St. Thomas Aquinas, well, that was uh, another good school. And this time around, doing great for their alma mater. But uh, that's it. And that's where we end the new statement for the morning.